The other thing that I found for any kind of trust building is uh, I do use a lot of affirmations. I started using them when I um, I had a huge business reversal and I had um, I was a single mom and I had my fiance was killed in a car accident. And all this caused me to become uh, dependent on drugs. I chose to hide and bury my pain with cocaine. So it was a, a long, slow process of just coming to the end of that. There was no, there's no joy there. There's no solace. You don't go through any kind of resolution. You just are stuck behind this iron curtain of drug, you know, and refusal to feel the pain, right? And when, so when I finally stopped uh, the drugs, it was a choice that I had to make. And I had these books that had affirmations in them that I had had on my nightstand for who knows how long. And as I had just decided I would stay in bed for three weeks until I was rested, and I read these books. So these affirmations were the baby steps for me to um, begin to come out of that hiding. Thank you, thank you from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. Stay connected to gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the gratitude seekers. Come join us. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Our guest is a self-taught decorative artist who, as a single mother, built her business into a nationally recognized company with projects published in every major design magazine in the U.S. Her new memoir, This or Something Better, takes an unflinching look at early abuse and its effects. Readers learn how nature guided and empowered her successful career until devastating fires on her mountain forced her to face her lifelong issues with trust. She and her husband live in Northern California where they hike and ride horses on Sonoma Mountain. Mm -hmm. Her name is Elisa Stensel Levine and I'm really grateful to have her here with us on the Gratitude Podcast. Lisa? Yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let us know a little bit more about you, um, about where you are right now. Yes. So, here I am. I must say, I just turned 72. Um, I'm super fit and happy and healthy, thankfully. I'm so grateful for that, <laughs> Georgian. Um, and um, I, I have just finished writing this memoir that will come out in, in, in June. Um, and that the title, This or Something Better, really is about how I approached almost everything from the very beginning. So if it's all right with you, I'll tell that the listeners just a tiny bit about the early part of my life and how gratitude, nature, and other issues sort of came together and shaped me and how I think maybe they could think about that in their early life mm -hmm. and how it may have shaped them. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I, the first thing I remember 
my very first memory. I was not quite two years old. I'm sure I was really only about a year and a half old. But many people have said that I couldn't possibly remember that. But I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> so I was tiny. And I was outside by myself. My parents lived uh, sort of in a suburban wooded area. And my dad was building a house. Um, and I guess I was walking along uh, just outside and I saw my shoes moving and I thought I th I thought those are my shoes and somehow that idea that these are my shoes and I I was moving my feet in my shoes that meant I was this person and I just remember looking up and seeing the trees and the trees were moving with this gentle blow you know gentle wind and I reached my hands up and I just was just so thrilled to be on the planet. I thought, this is, I'm so happy here. I'm so, so probably would have said I'm grateful. So I reached out to say hello and realized I, I, I don't, I don't have words. I, I can't talk. Right. <laughs> so when just at that moment, these birds flew and the trees waved and I realized I'm here, you know, and we are all one. This is the essence of life. I'm lucky. I'm happy. I'm here. And, you know, how these ideas of words and thoughts came to me, I can't really explain. But I was perfectly satisfied with the fact that I'm on the planet, right? Yeah. So that was the beginning. Um, but uh, in my um, family life, um, there were issues that were very, very difficult. Um, so... I really relied on nature to soothe me when my grandmother started scrubbing me and calling me a murderer when I was tiny until I was almost five because I was Catholic and she thought that my mother was Catholic and had married her son. And so this was an issue. Um, but even as meanwhile, her husband, who was my step grandfather, um, he, he he spent time with me on Saturdays when my grandmother was at church. Um, she was Seventh Day Adventist, and he, when I was tiny, um, he did sexually molest me. But I didn't realize that it was bad or not good because it was very subtle, and I thought I was special, and it was a way of feeling safe and belonging. I was tiny. So by the time I could start to talk, I was almost three, it was maybe two and a half, he then stopped his special relationship with me, shall we say, and turned to my little cousin who was just slightly younger and couldn't talk, and I felt abandoned, you know. Um, and then I just then I just was done with that, him and his supposed specialness and um, my grandmother and I found no way to really explain this to my parents my, you know my grandmother was my father's mother so she would be like God in my mind and so I couldn't tell on her to her own son that didn't make any sense so I just didn't and um, eventually I told my grandmother that I couldn't possibly be a murderer because I was only a little child and I remember just looking out the window as we were driving because we were alone in her car and all of these pear orchards were just going by. And you, you know how when you drive by orchards, how they open up like a fan and, you know, they're just, they just open and you, it's just beautiful uh, how they look. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I have to say something to her. So when I said that, she said, you know, it doesn't matter that you're a little child. It's because you're Catholic and the Catholics were murdered you know, thousands and thousands of people. So it's just like you did it yourself in the Crusades. And I, I just, I, of course, I'm in America at that time, of course, and I didn't know anything about the Crusades. This was 1954, 55. Um, and there was a cartoon on TV called Crusader Rabbit. And I'm like, I don't understand. I really, there's no way I can understand this. So I decided just to look at the pear orchards and let them fan by me and just dream on about, you know, nature and just never mind my grandmother. There's nothing I could do. But I really was convinced 
that making my own life was, you know, really the only answer. I'd have to make my own life. And so that was my intention. And I had access to nature every day in every way. We lived um, in, near a river and it was absolutely beautiful and there was no other houses for seven miles. So, you know, that's pretty isolated. And um, that's where I learned as many things as I possibly could about um, kindness. I wrote my own idea of what uh, of the purpose of life. And I thought it would be published in Time Magazine when I was um, 12. I had carefully written it out, but um, no, that wasn't to be the person I shared it with, uh, thought that I had copied it out of something. It was all plagiarized, you know, mm -hmm. and I did never send it anywhere because I just thought, okay, then people aren't going to believe me. So uh, anyway, um, as time passed, um, the more I tried to build my life, uh, the more I continue to rely on nature. And what happened in, in the near time, just recently, in, in 2017, when we had this terrible fire on our mountain and um, 80,000 acres were, um, I mean, sorry, 80,000 acres were burned and 40 oh people God. died. And oh. it was a hor horrific for all of us. And we just weren't accustomed to it. There had been no fires here. Um, when I ran away from the mountain with my husband, I did not, it was midnight and there was terrible smoke and everything, but I did not call out to any of my neighbors, Georgian. I didn't, I didn't try to help anybody. I didn't go to anybody's door as we're, run, you know, racing down the hill. We have this one way out on our mountain and I did not try to save my neighbors. Now, Many people have said that's normal or something. No, this isn't the issue for me. I was called a murderer as a tiny child. If someone had died, Georgian, it would have been just beyond my ability to cope. I mean, and here, here I am, this person who thinks I know about the purpose of life and thinks I know about uh, essence and wonder and trust and joy, and yet not a single thought for another person. Right? This, this just can't, I can't abide that. So that was when I decided to look at my life and write the, the truth about my history of um, trust and love and sincerity and share it and try to discover the unintended consequence of turning away from people. Okay? I had turned away from people from a very early age. I was able to manage a few really deep and beautiful relationships, my son, my husband, um, and this is a great gift, but uh, the armor that I created when I was tiny was invisible to me. And I think this is one of the things that I think people carry about with them without knowing. And exactly. that I, yeah, the idea of gratitude and uh, somehow it can help you ease this burden of historic ideas of how, how you have to live your life. Um, and it's just, uh, I'm really grateful to be on this podcast because um, there's just a lot to explore about how we see ourselves and our place on this planet and what we can learn and grow. I mean, to, to, for me, it's really trying to rediscover wonder as an innocent, right? <laughs> and yeah, so the, the feeling of gratitude is part of that. Um, you're just standing in um, a stream of being and it's, so even like here, we're speaking now, and for you, you know, you do this on a daily basis, which is beautiful. And to be able to immerse yourself in the stream of gratitude in any given moment is a, is a huge gift. Um, and so anyway, I thank you for this opportunity.
<laughs> Thank you so much for that. I I really appreciate it, and uh, I really appreciate the way you've prepared for our interview. And uh, yeah, that means a lot to me. And I could feel how much you appreciate this opportunity by doing that. So mm -hmm. definitely. So um, I wanted to get back to something that you that you shared uh, a couple of minutes ago about trust. I think mm. we all have some kind of, let's say, trust issues. Uh, I can't find better words at the moment, but um, the idea is that we felt like we trust people, we were vulnerable, and we got hurt. And um, the thing here is that most of the times we are grateful when we are able to trust other people and to be interdependent, not yes. fully independent. And uh, I think that's that's a really powerful thing that we we can all think about. Um, and it's uh, it's something important that we can um, become aware of and make some some baby steps toward more trust and uh, becoming more vulnerable and. Um yeah I think this this is a great way of becoming more grateful. So my question is what has been your experience with this with trust and uh, whether my idea is is right that it actually helps you become more grateful. Trying to fit into one size fits all solutions is so frustrating and lacking efficiency in any kind of change you want to make. My favorite thing about Noom Weight is that I'm encouraged and supported to choose better habits for my health based on who I am and how I like to live. Food loggings keep me aware of my eating habits and my coach Olivia helps me make better choices by using a psychology-based approach. I believe in the power of habits, gratitude habits, healthy eating habits, they give us the long-term results we're after, whether we want to lose weight or enjoy a happier life. Having an off day is okay. Being flexible, not stressful, is what Noom Weight is about, and that's why I love them. And making progress each day is what we gratitude seekers are all about. So start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash gratitude. That's noom.com slash gratitude. Well, it's, it's really like this magic formula because... Um, you can set out like on a path to be trusting. You can, let's say you have a new relationship. I, my husband, we met 30 some years ago and I was 38 years old at the time. And I really was, you know, quick to talk to him about intimacy and how important it was and how, you know, all these different ideas of how we could be. And I'm just very verbal and, he is general. I call him the Sphinx. He doesn't talk very much, <laughs> you know. And so uh, all this talking I was giving him, uh, I, I just have to say, George, and it was probably four or five years later that I said, you know, I don't know anything about what I'm saying. I have, I have, I, I have to say, I don't really, I really don't know. I, I'm making it up. And, you know, we just have to start over and start fresh and see where we really are. You can have um, a lofty and good goal, just like you say in your introduction uh, on your podcast page, you know, that you're not grateful at all times, you know, not going to be in gratitude at every second. Um, certainly, uh, the trust issue, um, we want that we want to feel comfortable and comforting. And a sense of belonging it seems so huge and important in most cases, um, whether it's at your place of work, um, in your family, as a mother, as a child, um, you know, as a citizen, it's important. Um, but how to get that trust and that flow going, 
is is it's I think it's kind of personal and it's it's um, unique to to each person. So I've had to really start to identify where I'm resisting and pulling back. And so if I see someone and let's say I'm working for a very, very wealthy client and I, and I'm feeling anxious, um, then the first thing I have to do is just try to find myself, some center of myself and remember that I'm there to bring my gifts to them and, you know, to see what gifts they have in them. And if you go there from that perspective, then you're not so concerned about judgment. You know, you're bringing the, the, I have this saying that somebody once gave to me and I absolutely love, and it's just, you have a deep well of joy within you. And so when I feel distracted or uncertain, um, and especially anxious, I can just say that. And that gives me the presence so that I can start to feel the opportunity for trust. Now, will I take the opportunity? Not every time, you know, or maybe not as deeply as I'd like. Or maybe there won't be, there won't be reciprocation. But generally, it's a very huge help. The other thing that I found for... Uh, any kind of trust building is uh, I do use a lot of affirmations. I started using them when I um, ha- I had a huge business reversal and I had um, I was a single mom and I had my fiance was killed in a car accident. And all of this caused me to become uh, dependent on drugs. I chose to hide and bury my pain with cocaine. So it was a a long, slow process of just coming to the end of that. There was no, there's no joy there. There's no solace. You don't go through any kind of resolution. You just are stuck behind this iron curtain of drug, you know, and refusal to feel the pain, right? And when, so when I finally stopped uh, the drugs, it was a choice that I had to make. And I had these books that had affirmations in them that I had had on my nightstand for who knows how long. And as I had just decided I would stay in bed for three weeks until I was rested, and I read these books. So these affirmations were the f- baby steps for me to um, begin to come out of that hiding and the shame of a business reversal, the um, uh, pain of the loss of someone I thought was just so, so wonderful. Uh, That, that was all difficult, but not near as difficult as the many, many years. I mean, I think it was four years that I spent hidden from my own self. And so coming through that and then using any affirmation I could find that would help and then being held by this um, wonderful teacher who said to me, you know, you have a deep well of joy within you. From that moment, then my own internal essence was sparked again, right? And that was the, the, one of the deepest experiences of my life. And I would, I still, I try to give this to other people. Um, when I see someone that is, you know, worried, they're standing on, like, it's almost like a, a threshold of a change in their life and they're ready to go for something that's going to be much more beautiful for them, but they're anxiously standing back a little bit. I may just put my hand on their shoulder and just say, I just know you have a deep well of joy within you. And they just feel that it just changes everything. I absolutely love it. And it's beautiful. Um, and uh, that's one of my little tricks. Um, as far as trust uh, in general, you know, 
I find by giving, I'm a very kinetic person. I like to move around and do. So I am cooking now on Wednesdays. I do these meals for 200 people with a team mm. of three other chefs. And this is beautiful because I used to cook in restaurants way back in the day when I was like 17 and trying to raise my child. So um, it's just beautiful. And it's food, you know, it's, just, it's a meal service for um, people that is free. Um, and it's beautiful food that we, we, we make. Um, and then just, I just really like volunteering and that's a huge help to me. Um, even when I was working very, very hard, I always felt doing something civic, something that is of benefit, whether it's shopping for somebody that's shut in or, um, cleaning up trash, whatever, something, um, I think I feel that is very healing and that's been my way of trying to connect to people. The uh, most recent ever since the fires, I'm having to tell myself that's not enough. You know, you have to really create the presence and reverence to let the other person show you who they are and not just mm -hmm. do this doing it's got to come to an end, George. And I've got, I've got to allow myself to be and let other people be. And um, it's really interesting in my work is possible because it's, it's it, there's a program there in that I'm going to come, I'm going to work with decorators, we're going to design all this, the colors and textures and manners of doing uh, any kind of interior paint work. And then um, when all these patterns and designs and everything are designed, they will be applied by the people that work with me, and then we will go away. And this will be their home, you know, done into whatever style it's supposed to be. Um, so I can give my all to finding the right design, the, the way the positive and negative spaces um accentuated the colors and how it works with their skin, their eyes, their joy, all those things are, you know, it's just a total intuitive immersion. It's beautiful. And I feel like I'm super close to them and then I just go away and I'm done. So yet because my job has been to try to make sure that things are looking right and things are, uh, suitable for the building and the period that we're doing and all these kinds of things. I've done a lot of travel and uh, I, I've gotten into this very really strong editing mode where one uh, looks at, uh, let's just say some beautiful building, but then something's not quite right about it. Well, you, if you're not, if I'm not careful, I will take this same idea that I'm supposed to be the judge of all these things and not just judge the work that I'm producing, but also then the building itself and then the people in the building. Okay. <laughs> so then maybe they're, they need a haircut or maybe this, or maybe, I mean, really, please, it's just so superficial and not even uh, productive. It's yeah. just a defense. So, um, it's just that this is why I'm saying that it's, it's the whole thing is so so amazing. The whole thing between trust, gratitude, wonder, and judgment is just like this ever it's a kaleidoscope and ever changing. Mm -hmm. You're going to find things new that you can do differently. Uh, you just try to have try to keep some humor, okay? <laughs> As you're trying to <laughs> grow yourself into a better human, right? Because Without a little humor, you know, gee, it would be very hard. Definitely, definitely. And um, I was thinking about the fact that you are actually exemplifying trust in, in this moment. The fact that you're mm -hmm. opening up to me, to us, about mm -hmm. your story, about uh, some things that most people aren't, um are afraid to share that aren't open to sharing and um I, I think this is very powerful and i'm i'm thinking about uh 
some of my listeners that have reached out that have told me her uh, uh, their story mm-hmm. and um i really appreciate that and it's wonderful that by knowing what they're going through i can recommend certain episodes for instance um if they're going through certain things based on uh based on their situation because there are over 700 episodes so um mm-hmm. i i know most of them um by heart so i can help better and i think that's that's an important part of trust when we are able to trust other people and open up we are uh, able to receive that help and we are able to uh, like i said become more in- interdependent and mm-hmm. I, I think this links beautifully to your work as well um we uh here in in romania we tend to do everything by ourselves if, even in the house even the the design and and everything as a tendency and um trusting another person uh with the with the design that's that's something big because it's your home it's it's the place where you live and i believe that it's uh, um another great example of vulnerability of trust the fact that they trust you so much that they they give you the the creative freedom to create something beautiful for them and without that probably they would do something but that's not at the level that you can create and i think in general this is something really beautiful that and uh, that we can experience when we uh, open up and we we trust each other more we we get to receive something better and yeah that's just wonderful well it is truly a collaborative experience in the best of times you know i would i guess a person could just go and design a hotel room so i'm sure they there's many people that do that you know the whole design is done with the mythical person in mind not an actual client um and so when i used to buy houses and restore them i would be with this idea of home and i would try to make it each in the house i did 16 houses in 6 years with some partners and i took was in charge of all the colors and paint and pattern and all that and um i just uh i tried to make it resonate you know with this idea of essence so that it would feel like home and we sold every house the first week that they were on the market for the price that we asked or more and we had people of every type and we'd have a couple we'd have a gay couple we'd have an old you know older couple a young family all of them are saying this is the ha- this is home this is home and i'm like oh yay okay great um and uh so that that was really an interesting thing and i think because i yearned for a feeling of this this idea of freedom and safety sort of encompassing both what is that you know that's the idea of family that's the idea of you know being cared for and being able to be caring um and so i wanted to exemplify that and also um leave space for the person so it couldn't be so over decorated that the, the people aren't needed they need to need to have people in it to bring it to life so yeah it was it was a really exciting time um and that's the business that failed ultimately that was so devastating and then i built up the other business which is decorative art as um uh working with the, um interior designers and architects all over the world so that was that was exciting and collaborative but again um there's so much more depth that i can gain by allowing um t- to allowing the armor that just is there to be melting and that's that's my job now melt the armor you know yeah find the wonder well that that's that's a beautiful affirmation 
And yeah, you're you're doing a, a great job at this, and uh, yeah, we can see that, and we appreciate that. And um, I, I also wanted to get to uh, to another point that has been featured on the podcast quite a lot, in the sense that um, many of our guests said that um, one of the best ways to to heal and to get connected to gratitude is by going out in nature mm. so yes. can you talk a little bit about this uh, about your gratitude for nature and the way you connect with with gratitude in nature yes i mean in the stories and my book and the essays i write i tell of these things that are seemingly so tiny um i just remember being maybe like I said, eight years old, I'm laying down on these warm round rocks by the river. They're all smooth and round because they've been tumbled for so long in the, in the, when the river is high, but now the river is low, it's summer. And I'm just sleeping on these, like lay, lazing about on these rocks, right? Happy as a little clam by myself. And I see this branch of a, this like a little bush and it has looks like something's funny it seems to be moving a little bit and all of a sudden it explodes and all of these ladybugs go flying out of it i mean it ha could have been a thousand i don't even know how many wow. it could have been look like a firework right and so and i'm just like oh my god did that really happen and then you know and I, you just look away for a minute and you look there again and then they're gone and all you can see is just this the bush is just barely moving a little bit and it's like saying yes that happened but you know only you saw it so that's the way it is right I mean, there's these things that are happening all over when you're out there, if you just can take a minute. Um, what I do here and now, I live on this mountain. We are within um, just uh, not uh, 100 steps of uh, 30 miles of hiking trails um, because we're living on the slope of the mountain. And there's it, we're in a wildlife corridor. And we have horses so we could ride, but I don't ride. I like to walk and hike and run. So we have, I have this 12 mile course that I absolutely love because it's just like a storybook trail and it's very soothing. Um, and the difficult part comes in the beginning and then you're just on this long, slow, um, quiet hike. And there's these trees, all these different trees and plants that I see when I and it's like a meditation hike. So I like to do that alone. Um, and then other days I go a four or six mile or something with my husband. He's on the horse and we meet up in these different places, you know, and it's really fun. And then and where it's possible, I'll run and the horse will run with me. And, you know, otherwise, um, you know, he, the horse will run much faster <laughs> to uphill, right? And then we'll meet up, you know, here and there. So it's just a beautiful opportunity. And then down by the creek on our property, there's these circles of redwoods. It's called a fairy ring. So there's these redwoods. And then in the center of the redwoods, um, you can lay down. And then we always go there on Yom Kippur. We're Jewish. Um, and that's where we have, the, we call that our temple. And we spend the day of fasting down there. Um, and it's always a really illuminating, you know, it's illuminating to remember that we're mortal. And if we are lucky, we'll be written in the book of life, right? And so easy to forget that every second, right? Doesn't, you yeah. know, I can remember it now, Georgian. Okay, but now, oh no, but now it's gone. Okay, but now. <laughs> yeah, so. so true yeah and I, I love i love this idea of uh, nature being our temple and mm. um yeah it, it makes so much sense and for me a, a very interesting experience was when i was in bali mm. where all the temples or at yeah. least most of them i know i haven't seen them all of course are uh, open space in the sense that they don't have a roof yeah and uh, they just have uh some walls basically and some uh, different um, buildings inside of these walls 
but they don't have any roofs. And uh, for me, that was shocking because I was thinking I, wherever I went in, in Europe, I, I saw that um, all of the temples, all of the churches, of course, mm. had uh, ceilings. And uh, seeing that was very interesting because it was uh, a different way of connecting um, spiritually and uh, when you looked uh, up basically you saw the sky and yeah. you were in the temple and it was it's such a really powerful experience uh, and unexpected somehow so yeah i think it's similar to what you just said with nature being uh, our temple yeah yes Yes, and I think that's part of that vulnerability thing, you know, like that, that's, that's what it sounds so appealing about the Balinese approach is that yeah, we are just covered with some skin here, you know, we're not really, you know, impervious and warrior, you know, everlasting made of metal. We are sensitive and delicate and the um, reverence for that, um, is one of the ways that you can, I think, build your own esteem, even in after whatever periods of shame or unresolved and unforgiven regrets you have. Um, you can find your way through all those um, with gratitude and just reverence. He really... I think the idea of the comparative reality, you know, like, okay, um, here I am and I'm 72 and somebody else who is 72 is um, more well turned out or has whiter teeth or whatever the heck, you know, it's just interesting to say to yourself, okay, what is it I'm learning here? I'm learning that um, Maybe I would like whiter teeth. I can probably go get that. I can make that happen somehow, perhaps. You know, I don't have to be upset or to feel, you know, be diminished by the fact that I'm appreciating somebody. I'm just going to be appreciating them and be grateful that they gave me an idea, right? It doesn't have to be that, um, you know, without that somehow I'm less than um, if I find something about someone else that I admire. And, um, so that's just an interesting, I don't know, side note. It may not be very relevant. Excuse me for Well, for no, no problem. <laughs> I think it's a great idea because we all do that whether we're conscious of it or not. And um, we're, we're all comparing ourselves to other people. And it's just about the way we do it and the way we turn it around or not. So, yeah, I believe that instead of being envious and uh, feeling bad and uh, going on a downward spiral with this, we can, as you, as you mentioned, go on an upward spiral. We can see that we admire something at someone and that it could be something that we might want or might like. And uh, that's okay. We don't have to feel bad in any way. Because that's that's the problem, basically, the fact that the way we see what's on the outside and we the way we do the comparison it makes us feel in a certain way. It makes us feel us uh, feel less than that. Yes. Well, that's what that's like the title of the book. You know, this or something better is an affirmation, um, mm -hmm. and you know, really, it's just saying yes, I have this, and I'm grateful. But if you have something better, you know, bring it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I'll take it. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just, and then the other thing, I mean, when you talk about manifesting through affirmation and that kind of thing, I just think I have had such great luck. I mean, I must be so terribly, tremendously grateful for the fact that I decided somewhere along the line that I would use Shakti Gawain's book, Creative Visualization, mm -hmm. combined with another oh, book. Right. Um, yeah, another book. Um, you can heal your life. Okay, that was recommended to me when I was still doing drugs and I got very mad and I told the person, you know, you just think my whole life is sick. 
you know, and actually my whole life was, okay? So anyhow, those two books were the ones that I had by my bedside. And when I decided I would change my life, then I wrote these, you know, I wrote out these lists. Um, like, for example, um, my new home is, and I would write every all the qualities that I wanted in this new home. You know, I want children playing nearby. I want these things. I want, you know, whatever these things were, you know, beautiful flowers, etc. cetera. Um, and including even the how much I could afford to pay and, you know, and why I love it. If I was renting, it would, I have a wonderful landlord, you know, that kind of thing. And I would just write it in the present tense. My new home is, um, you know, whatever my new career is. My will be published in all these magazines. I will penetrate the San Francisco market, whatever those things are. And just look at that list and read it out loud in the present tense. And it would just, it would happen. And I mean, my if I made a five-year plan, it would be done in two years. I'm just saying. I mean, it's just all, a, a tremendously um, fortunate. And I've had many people that have, have helped them make their lists and, and they get what they have on their list. Now, you must be, you know, quite sincere with this list you know because like for example if you want to find a mate and you write the man i choose to love is and you have this huge list right are you willing to be all those things this is my question i'm not going to go any deeper into it but you really have to look at what you're saying putting out there that you think you are ready and able to appreciate and um reason you know um, resonate with mm -hmm. and if you are not yet there, then you have some work to do, right? Um, Definitely. You know, <laughs> but that's okay. This or something better, right? <laughs> exactly. And this relates beautifully to gratitude because um, we appreciate what we have and we really appreciate what we have. Like we, we really see what we already have. We really... Um, appreciate it like on on a really deep level we are very aware of how lucky we are of how blessed we are with what we have yeah and uh we're open to something better we are open to better things we are open to new goals um but the first step of course is appreciating where we are and feeling grateful for where we are because when we're going to get to the next goal we're going to experience the same thing we're going to be grateful for where we are and we can choose to um to want something better and i think that's um part of us wanting to grow but mm -hmm. also about appreciating the journey uh, what we talked about um before um uh, getting on uh this recording the fact that uh i'm appreciating the journey I, I want to grow, I want to reach more people and help them with gratitude. Uh, but the, the journey is uh, the, the most important and, and enjoying it. And yeah, um, I also wanted to, to, to get to something else. Um, when, when you did your affirmations and uh, you've written what you, what you wanted, was part of uh, having neighbors like uh, cougars on that list? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, you know, are you talking about the, uh, the mountain lion? Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, well, I I wanted to. I, I love having a spirit animal, and I had had a hummingbird come and just like be right before my uh, forehead. Um, looking at me and looking at me and I thought, okay, so I looked up all about the sort of the idea of what the spirit animal of a hummingbird was. And I saw that that was who I was at that time. And it was only just recently that I was in this very room that I'm in now, my office. And all of a sudden, here comes a mountain lion. And he's looking in my, it's an eight sided window. And he's only four feet away, looking at my window. Did I send you that picture? No, I, I saw it on Instagram and I Oh, <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, that, that, and so when he came, I'm like, okay, I mean, this is, it's actually a juvenile one. It's probably only maybe not quite two years old. So um, we set up a wildlife camera. I got one from my husband for his birthday um, so that we can see what's going on out there. Um, we know they're around. And um, yes, I wanted, there was two things I wanted. I wanted to see a mountain lion here and I want very much to find an arrowhead. And I'm kind of annoyed that I haven't had my magical moment in finding a beautiful arrowhead. But my husband found one, and he he, he thought nothing of it, and he it was on the on, in this little dish on the table for like I don't know two months. And I said, "Wait a minute, what is this arrowhead?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, I found that." And I'm like, "Uh, you know." So anyway, maybe we have we have together, like he says, together we make a whole person. So exactly, we have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's um, it's wonderful that we uh, we're able to to be so creative and to to attract these these wonderful things in our life and like like you're saying in the book this or something better and mm-hmm. uh, I was thinking that having these kinds of neighbors I saw that you have other kinds of neighbors as well uh, is part of that something better and i've done this this exercise myself with uh, uh, the place uh, where i lived and um, it happened very similarly i I had the list but actually it was even better and uh, yeah 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 that's 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 what happened to me when i found my house that i (laughs) uh, lived in san francisco it was I was looking for the house and I, and I, you know, believed I would have the house and the house would existed. And I walked up the stairs and when I walked in, I, my first thought was, this is much too nice for me. And my, I thought, oh my God, you better get tuned up here. You know, you're supposed to be believing that you have value and everything. And now you find this beautiful place. And the first thing you shrink away, this is not right. And I called my girlfriend <clears throat> who's an artist and I said, I'm having a, some kind of, problem accepting the beauty that's coming to me and she said well you need to just do this she said imagine take in your hands a beautiful cloth and make it in in your mind and imagine it is the cloth the the cape of receiving and design it however you want it doesn't matter if it has just all one color if it's velvet or it's all embroidered i don't care but it's your cape of receiving and now you must put this on and allow yourself to receive and say, thank you, God. And I said, okay. And so I did, and then it was good. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And um, with this idea, I would like us to, to wrap this up. Again, mm-hmm. I think we can um, go on for hours. And yes. I'm really happy that, that we have this going on. Um, let our audience know where where they can find your book where they can get in touch with you yes well my website is elisa stancil levine.com because basically my name um the book is available this or something better on amazon um and uh and in every kind of bookstore um in barnes and noble etc etc but you can and so it's easy to get. It's pre-order time now. It won't come out until June 7th. Um, I'm on Instagram under my name. I'm on LinkedIn under my name, comma, author. I'm on Facebook under my name. And uh, I have an author page on Facebook too. But I like. I actually really like my website. And so I would love it if people would go there because there's some essays on there that would also give them some ideas. Um about life and i would love to share them that's wonderful thank you so much for being here with us uh, especially at the time uh, that you're doing this for us i I really appreciate that thank you thank you (laughs) have a good night you too bye hey gratitude seeker thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview i really appreciate it and If you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again.
This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude. My name is Anthony Capazzoli. I am the host of the Dismantle Life podcast and I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict after nearly 40 years of addiction. I've been clean and sober for nearly four years and work hard to help others find recovery. Join me each episode to learn from my sober superhero guests and how they went from the darkness of addiction into the sunlight of recovery. Dismantled Life can be found on Digitent Podcasts, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.